Hi, this is Lee with Crash Just Hobby demonstrating how to solder with an XT60 connector and some bullet plugs. I start with my old trusty 30 watt uh, soldering iron and I clean the tip with both the razor blade and sandpaper and tin it with some solder. Here's an example of the soldering gun that I like to use. Now trim some heat shrink and slide it onto the power wires of the speed control. Strip the wires about the depth that they will go into the plug. You don't want an exposed wire beyond the plug. I prefer plumber's flux to the rosin flux that is usually used in electronics. It just works well on the wires and I've never had it fail. And it helps the solder to stick. It is important to plug the plug into the counter plug in order to make sure that it won't move and also to help control the heat. But never use the plug on your battery because you can short the battery out, create a fire or shock yourself. After flexing the connector, uh, touch it to the soldering iron and fill the plug end with, with uh, enough solder that you'll be able to solder your wires in. Make sure you get the right red wire to the right plug. It goes to the flat side of the XT connector. If you get it backwards, you will waste a speed control when you plug it in. Attaches very quickly. Heat up the wire and after the solder is flowing and you see it start to shine, just work it into the plug. A good way to test the plug is to just pull it apart and see if both pieces stay connected. Make sure also that neither of the plugs has moved because the uh, plug itself got melted while you were soldering. Now slide the heat shrink up and I like to use a lighter or a hot air gun and shrink the heat shrink. I'm going to show you the exact same process again with a little bit less focus and a little closer up, but make sure you understand your plug, put a little of the flux on the solder to ends and uh, just put some solder in both sides. Now strip the wires, deep enough to fit into the plugs but not too much. Flux them so that the solder will stick to them. The brush stroke type movement I do on there is to make the wires all point the same direction. It doesn't matter what color your heat shrink is as long as you can still see the original wire. Make sure red wire to red wire, square into the plug, touch it until you all once see it goes shiny and it starts to flow and just press it in. Now if you have extra solder just turn it upside down the solder will flow off the plug and back down and around the bottom of the tip of the soldering iron. Do the same on the black wire. simple. Now slide the heat shrink up, making sure it's cool or the heat shrink will shrink before it uh, gets into place. And then using a hot air gun or a lighter, shrink it tight so that the, you can't have accidental contact. And check your plug by pulling it apart. Make sure before you ever go one step farther that you did get it right with the red plug to the square end of the plug. We're now going to solder bullet connectors. Take a motor you're going to use and just slide the female bullet connectors onto the male connectors that come on the motor. Make sure that the vent holes and the connectors are all up and uh, your solder won't run out when you put it into the plug. Flux it and fill each one of them with solder. Now if you fill them full enough with solder, you don't have to pre-solder the wires Pre-soldering the wires, it works and probably holds a little better, but if you get enough solder here at this point, you can do it without. I like to start with the middle wire so the other two don't get in the way, but heat it up, press the wire in, and make sure it's caught there. 
Now you'll notice on this red wire it's going to pop apart here in just a second. That usually comes because the wire was not hot enough or I didn't hold it in place while it cooled. Now we're going to put heat shrink on the wires after pulling them apart to make sure that they're all holding. Slide the heat shrink on, but leave it about a sixteenth of an inch past the end of the plug. You want it to heat shrink down and make it so that there's no possibility for these bullet connectors to make contact. If they make contact, your speed control will heat up to the point it may burn. As you test your motor, make sure you have the right size prop so that you are running the right amount of amps. Also make sure that if your prop is running the wrong direction, all you have to do is trade any two of the three wires and it will reverse the direction of your prop. You don't have to buy a special prop if the prop's turning the wrong direction. We wish you the very best. Thanks for your business and crash test hobbies.